for what it's worth, we are now in the New England of the Quran. Are you a <laughs> fucking prophet, bro? <laughs> That's not how I meant it exactly, but even though each page still takes as long to get through, we're crossing into new chapters more frequently now, so it seems like we're making progress we're not really making. Basically, we're still just spinning our wheels, but we're spinning them much faster now. Yeah, Muhammad clearly made a big deal about, like, announcing his plan. I'm doing 114 chapters. Everybody heard it, and then he finished 30 or so, and then all of a sudden it was the night before the due date. <laughs> surprised it wasn't triple spaced by this point. No shit. <laughs> you know how ahead of my time I am? One word chapters. Clapper, I'll kill you. Ooh, one word chapters, <laughs> yeah. one word chapters. Yeah, well, Ooh. that's a great idea, yeah. <laughs> And, of course, still aboard for this cross coronic road trip is my lovely wife, Lucinda. Lucinda, welcome back. You know, you're going to be away for like eight days, and this is what you wanted to do with your wife the night before you left. Just saying. I, it was not Just my saying. idea to not fuck while we recorded. Yeah. I just, I'm going to toss that out there as well. Anyway, we stopped giving Heath two votes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, as I'm sure everybody recalls, the last time we saw our hero, he was telling us about Moses, and we're going to pick back up with Surah 48, The Conquest, or Victory. And we're going to start this one off with another variation on Muhammad's old, if I wasn't talking to God, how could I be so awesome argument? Basically, he says, we won the battle, and how could people not especially loved by God hack other humans to death so good? Right. Yeah. But what about the times we lost? But what about the times we lost? That's you. That's what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. this one kind of reads like Muhammad needed to clarify the extent to which he spoke for God. It's a whole chapter of when you promise me something, you're promising God. And mm -hmm. when you submit to God, you're really submitting to me, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard to believe that speaking on behalf of an unquestionable, omnipotent, and imaginary being would so consistently lead to corruption, isn't it? <laughs> Muhammad's like a mid-level drug dealer trying to make sure nobody, like, George youngs him and goes straight to Colombia. Except in this case, Pablo Escobar doesn't exist, and you don't even get any baby lax. <laughs> nothing. And of course, there's also a little more, you can't trust those lion bastards that ask you for mercy in this one than I care for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he continuously makes it clear in this one that God loves nothing more than people pledging their lives to Muhammad. Right. And I always wonder when I read this shit, is there a too far at this point? Is there anything Muhammad could say that would be so blatantly self-serving that people would have called bullshit on him? Right. Hmm. Really? Um, uh, maybe maybe if he asked for an, a nine-year-old girl to fuck? Wait. <laughs> no, 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 that, no. That worked. That worked. <laughs> yeah, I want to say like getting a revelation mid-reaching for the last mini Snickers, just like, oh, oh, you know what, Kyle? You're getting a revelation. I am getting a revelation, Kyle. <laughs> Crazy. You're like a prophet. <laughs> And, and and then there's this like weird bit where he sounds like he's actively trying to make a promise and not make it at the same time. <laughs> he's, he's telling all the soldiers, "Yeah, God totally gave you that victory. We all just won, but but also other shit. He's gonna give you other shit too. So keep being loyal and all." But then one verse later, he says, "God has promised you many future gains, but He has given them to you in advance." Hey, hey, what kind of bullshit void where prohibited clinically tested double speak <laughs> is that? And the Saudi version says. God rewarded them with a near victory. Oh, wait, what? Uh, what? That's a loss. Yeah. That's what right. they're surviving is dying. <laughs> when you're talking about soldiers in a war, that's almost not dying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> See, Muhammad and Trump have so much in common. <laughs> November 9th. Get ready for it. <laughs> 28th. The 28th. Uh. Okay, but 20 to be fair, though, <laughs> I checked another translation and it said imminent victory. But but still now we're now we're buying a garage full of Amway soda. It's not <laughs> hey, I'm that much still better. gonna sell that. Just you wait. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. And and then Muhammad promises that no non Muslims will ever defeat Muslims in battle. It's more of that that scientific accuracy we hear so much mm -hmm. about. I mean, look, hey guys, if this book was wrong, there would have been some kind of you know, some kind of Mongol invasion in twelve fifty eight or something. <laughs> And also the 20th century would have happened. So <laughs> And this. Yeah. Yeah, right. Hey, hey, that dust-covered kid in Aleppo is just biding his time. Oh, you what? Wait. Wow. I, it's Jesus. in the book. I'm just reading the book. <laughs> Any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> then he just starts blatantly blowing smoke up his soldiers' asses. He's all <laughs> like, Muhammad is God's messenger. This is still God talking, not me. Anyway, Muhammad is... God's messenger and all the people with him are firm, unyielding, compassionate, and swing nine inches minimum. <laughs> like, at least nine inches. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and uh, 
If you're wondering if he references vegetable sodomy here, I was. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he does. <laughs> yeah. um, this is the description of Muslim soldiers. Like a seed which sends forth its shoot, then makes it strong, grows thick, and rests on its stem, <laughs> impressing the farmers that God may enrage the disbelievers with them. What? Like a nice, girthy cucumber for God to torment heathens with. That's clearly butt stuff he's talking about, right? <laughs> with a cucumber? You get the I, feeling I Mo had a cucumber in his hand in front of his dick, just like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> right, Kevin? <laughs> right? Uh, 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 uh. Stop it. Uh, uh, uh. Crushing this. Uh. I always <laughs> have that impression. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, so then we move on to Surah 49, the private apartments where things like that happen. I know. guess. And, and now we really start to test the how far can he push the shit boundaries. This one starts off with God reminding people not to talk so loud that Muhammad has to <laughs> yell over them. Right. And don't make a big stink about it if Muhammad shows up late to something. He mm -hmm. probably had important shit to do. You know, God shit. Yeah. So. And Muhammad always gets the player one controller in Street Fighter. So maybe the fireball is better from that side. He likes it. No corner God traps. says it's not spamming. It's not. It's strategy. You can jump over him. Well, and then he basically says, and hey, if it seems like I'm doing something stupid, don't worry about it. Because it only seems that way to you. And you aren't God's messenger, so you're not privy to all the new shit. So, you know, if I seem a little bit nuts... Well, no, I mean, if, if Muhammad makes a blatantly false claim, he was probably speaking in relative language yeah. instead of absolute language. Oh, I see. Yeah. And as yeah. we all know, you can't be wrong about things in relative language. Like, there is no FGM in Iran. Relative language like that. <laughs> Does the queen have a clitoris or not, guys? <laughs> this matters to me. Four people are laughing and one is pissed. Also, uh, <laughs> can we return to this religion of peace nonsense? Because in verse 9, this book says... And if two groups of Muslims have a disagreement, fight each other until someone gives up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it then adds that you should eventually stop fighting each other, but it doesn't even give, like, diplomacy beforehand a token nod. Yeah. Yeah, and I shit you not, this is a very common verse used in apologetics. Yes. The second fucking half. The book <laughs> never disappoints. <laughs> it's like if Sermon on the Mount ended with not, and Christians <laughs> never talked about it. <laughs> It says, Muslim God loves those who are equitable, mm. like the kings and princes of an oil monarchy. So clearly, <laughs> equitable. Yeah. what he meant. Yeah, exactly. And he also forbids giving other Muslims degrading nicknames, which makes you really wonder what they called old Mo growing up. <laughs> no shit. And then we get maybe my favorite line in the book so far. I know I've got a lot of nominees, but in verse 12 of this one, it says in my translation, quote, do not spy on one another and do not backbite. So far, so good. But then he adds. Would any of you like to eat his dead brother's flesh? Yeah. <laughs> no, you would hate it. <laughs> End real universe quote. I, I love that he answers the question. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, here's my question. Did that just occur to him? Like, was he holding out dead guy arms and was like, anybody? Anybody? <laughs> oh, uh, no. Of course, you guys would hate it. Don't write that down. <laughs> also, uh, I'm confused. So... If you want to do any spying or backbiting, you need to either enjoy your dead brother's flesh or eat him alive. Do I have that right? <laughs> what if Very we confusing. absorbed a twin in the womb? Great question. D depends on whether or not it was your twin. Or not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great visual. Also, and, and this is maybe too minor to bring up, but in verse 13, it says that God made humankind out of a man and a woman. So you made humans... Out of humans. humans yeah. and, and what's amazing is this is as close to scientifically correct as he's gotten on this one, and it's a logical fallacy. <laughs> yeah, Ben Stein calls bullshit. <laughs> Why are there still humans then? <laughs> well, and if I'm, reading if I'm reading between the lines correctly here, in verse 16, he makes it very clear that he appreciates all the suggestions, but he's got this Quran thing covered. Right. He's doing just fine, and he likes the repeatedly asking if he's told you about Moses' shtick. Yeah, That's right. You thing. can tell he was getting a lot of editorial commentary yeah. from the fucking peanut gallery at this point. And then we get to Surah 50, and I swear this one got its name because Muhammad farted before he started trans, like like going into his trance or whatever, mm -hmm. and everybody just had to pretend that was a spoken word, so... Let's move on to quaff. <laughs> Mo, was that you? No, no, that's what I'm calling this one. Give him. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So we basically start this one by saying, I know some of you are thinking this motherfucker sounds crazy, and I get that. But if I don't speak for God, 
then why isn't the sky all wrinkly? <laughs> yeah. What's that? Exactly. Pretty sure I've never heard that apologetic before, but <laughs> the fact that the sky is just sky all the way across mm-hmm. is proof of God, and more specifically, proof of Muhammad's firsthand revelations about the resurrection from God. Of course. <laughs> yeah, this was a new one. Um, See how the... Invisible air is like uh, all one piece. Yeah, that's what I thought. Go kill Jews now. <laughs> this book. Exactly. Also, I've got a bit of a logistical problem with a resurrection. He starts giving us some details. And according to the Quran, all the people come back to life together at the end of the world because he stole everything from the fucking Jews. Mm. And apparently each person has two angels assigned to him, right? One to slave drive them <laughs> and the other to report on all the evil shit you did. Mm. Now, first of all, it seems like slave driving angels can handle more than one dead person at a time, especially if God springs for some fucking velvet ropes. Also, the snitch angel seems superfluous if my ears and eyes are already going to tell God all the bad shit I did. This is a crazy <laughs> waste of angels That's here. That's true. I didn't... Right, yeah. It seems like this could be an Uber share and an email and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying is we'd like to enter a bit on this whole resurrection. Yes. <laughs> 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 <Muhammad's> listening. <laughs> Too much regulation. Hmm. Go Trump. <laughs> Also, it says here that all the disbelievers are going to get in an argument with the tattling angel, <laughs> right? like a shitty couple at the front of the line at the soup Nazi. <laughs> and then God's going to yell specifically. It says this. God's going to be like, silence. I told you to have your order ready. No soup for you. Like, <laughs> it says this is what's going to happen. And then he's going to boil your stomach with hot soup. Yeah. Right. You will get soup. <laughs> yeah. There is soup. I also love how Muhammad felt the need to toughen up Jew God a bit. He says, I created the universe in six days and I never even got tired. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> As if to say, you know, I, I took that seventh day off, but not to rest like some motherfuckers say. I was playing volleyball and shit, you know, dancing, fucking being active, manly and shit. Yeah, no rest yeah. days for Allah. <laughs> no, sir. Are you eating pre-workout? Sure. It's like candy. <laughs> 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 and I guess keeping with our fart-related chapterization theme, mm. we are now going to move on to Surah 51, the wind that scatters. I feel like this whole Sarah can be summed up with the word seriously, y'all. Yeah, right. <laughs> seriously. Right. Yeah. Clearly at this point, he was deflecting a lot of questions about his judgment day scenario. So he's like, you know, and when people ask you, when is this judgment day going to be? Tell them it's the day when you're burning in hell like the miserable fucks that you are. OK, how about that for an answer? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So exact words from the Saudi version. OK. Taste you your trial burning. This is what you ask <laughs> to be hastened. Like, holding your little brother down and slowly lowering your spit into his mouth. <laughs> you know he was doing that while he was Definitely. saying this, too. Yeah. yeah, if it weren't this election year, it would be a lot harder to imagine what this probably looked like. You know, just Anderson Cooper and the other lady. Answer the question, Mr. Hamid. Mr. Hamid. <laughs> And then he says, have you heard the story of Abraham's guest? And it's all downhill from there. Right, right. Then, of course, we get the obligatory highlight reel of God's Old Testament body count. Mm -hmm. And and, and Muhammad's completely out of ideas now. Like, half the verses are basically just internal citations, like enormous URLs. (laughs) Might as well just close it out with a giant block quote of the Old Testament. Right, yeah, a couple blank pages for notes. Oh, Mm. ours is big, too. (laughs) And then we get Surah 52, the mount. And if I had to reduce this one to a sentence, I think I'd go with... God's going to fuck you up. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and that also works if you have to sum up the whole book. You just have to put, mm. oh, Jews in front of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Muhammad's that guy pacing back and forth in front of a bouncer calling him racial slurs on YouTube. <laughs> 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 now, but, but okay, according to verse 20 of Surah 52, Muslims get to fuck anime characters in heaven. <laughs> So I, I mean, look, I'm not saying I'm not an atheist anymore. I'm just saying somebody should have made it clear what exactly I was weighing here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, keep in mind, there's also going to be a really creepy team of, quote, boy servants mm-hmm. to service you as if they were preserved pearls. So take that however you want. <laughs> I have never been more Muslim. Where's my chest set? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty hot. All right. <laughs> He, he also admits here that one of the best parts of being in heaven is that you won't have to worry about worshiping God five times a day. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, buddy, do I have a solution for you? <laughs> right. <laughs> I even fucked a virgin once. Yeah. Then starting in verse 29, this Sarah just says, so in summary, I'm not insane or making this up. Ugh. If you have to tell somebody or anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I'm starting to think all the book has left is I am so not lying right now. 
because the next surah, the star, starts off with him saying, oh, I'm sorry, are you saying somebody else knows what I hallucinated better than I do? <laughs> but, but pretty much. And then, and then he, I, I mean, I guess it's a little new. He goes off on girl gods for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, he's like he's basically saying like, "Oh, your god has cooties." Yeah, yeah. In my version, he says that people who don't believe in the hereafter give angels female names, and what? I have what? no what? idea what that means. <laughs> Why would they Matt Dillahunty sitting around with Robert Price? You know what? I like <laughs> Therafina better. <laughs> <laughs> No fucking sense. I'm, I'm pretty sure he also condemns people for sins in utero in verse 32. Basically, he says, like, and don't try to tell me you're pure. God saw you touch your dick while you were in the womb. <laughs> yeah, right. Basically, uh, God was giving you noogies when you were a fetus. Motherfucker. Also, um, I thought it was pretty telling that they included a caveat on the illegal sex rule here. It, it literally says that God forgives you as long as you only commit the low level sex yeah, crimes. Yeah, like the pussy oh, grabbing okay. type stuff. That's where he decided to cut everyone some slack. <laughs> yeah, there's wiggle room on sex crimes. Fuck. And just so that we can close one of these sorrows on a point of agreement, I want to point out that over and over again, this book says, look, the stuff I'm telling you is every bit as accurate as the fairy tales in the Old Testament. And you know what? That's true. It is. Yeah, yeah. Compliment sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we move on to our last fart named Sura. That would be the moon. <laughs> And we start off by learning that when Judgment Day comes, the moon will crack in half. But apparently us non-believers will say, what's that? Broken moon? Must be the same old sorcery. Well, <laughs> will but, we? And, and, no, but to be <laughs> fair, though, if the moon broke, I would not assume it was the Muslim apocalypse. Right? I would still think this book was foolish. I mean, I, I wouldn't assume it was sorcery, but I'd be right, right. in spirit. Right. It's, it's like Eli on Cogdis. <laughs> <laughs> If the email wasn't snarky, how do you explain boats, huh? <laughs> Where did they come from? Yeah, so apparently Muhammad thinks we're going to be standing there watching the moon fall towards us like wily coyotes, <laughs> right. holding up a sign that says, everybody relax, it's just a weather balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Skeptic. Just some gas, swamp gas and Venus or something. Oh, shit. And I believe this is four stars in a row here where he says, you know who else they called a crazy liar that fucked camels when nobody was looking? Noah. Not so, me, the other, the biblical. Yeah, I would have yeah, said. Sure. So despite our intuitions, there is such a thing as repetitive for Muhammad. Oh, and we're going to learn that in spades in the next one. Yeah, he does this annoying thing, too, where like he keeps telling the same stories that he's told a hundred times, and then he closes each one with, oh, and by the way, learning shit from the Quran, super easy. Yeah. Could not be easier. Well, and you think he would have learned his lesson from Christianity on this one, but he continuously says that the end of the world is just around the corner. In, mm -hmm. the, in the Sura, in the year 600 something, it, I right, believe. Right. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we get another threat about the verbal taunts we're going to get on Judgment Day. It says, <laughs> it says we're going to be dragged through the fire on our faces, cool. and somebody's going to be yelling. This is the important part. Yeah. Somebody's going to be yelling. <laughs> Taste you the touch of hell. Like, like there's a group of skeptics that believe in the apocalypse, but don't really care because they think the trash talking isn't going to be mean enough. Yeah. To break it out. <laughs> right. And then we move on to our last surah of the night, number 55, the most merciful. And this one starts with the seventh century Arabic equivalent of bitching about the bag of Doritos being mostly empty. <laughs> one of his few <laughs> worthwhile digressions. Yeah, it's the closest I came to it's agreeing with him. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then he gives us another one of these lists that turns crazy halfway through. He, he's once more talking about all the shit that God made. And he's like, are you trying to say palm trees don't exist because God made those? And that's the pre-crazy part. Well, yeah, right. No, it, it then gets crazy because then he starts going, are you denying the existence of the moon or the date trees or the wind or the fire demons or the global oh. lack of estuaries? Fire demons? <laughs> the fuck? Mo, go back. Go back. Date trees, you know, sweet, brown. I'll show you later. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so just to review, um, we've already mentioned that you can debunk the Quran with Three Little Pigs and Jay Giles Band <laughs> yes, previously. Uh -huh. Also now throw in The Hudson River Exists. <laughs> the existence <laughs> of The Hudson River will do it too. And that's the whole story, uh, by the way. Just, just him pointing to a thing that exists and saying, God made that too. And then asking, which of your Lord's wonders would you deny? Dictating holy books for Muhammad and playing I Spy with a four-year-old requires essentially the same skill set. It really <laughs> does. You just see Aisha in the back mumbling, stop trying to make which of your Lord's wonders would you deny work? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Nothing, nothing. I'm nine. I'm nine. <laughs> but 
people, by the end of it, that is literally every other sentence, mm-hmm. right? You could tell people were starting to get annoyed, so he just started doing it more often. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's, it's basically one more chorus with a key change, meaning another couple minutes. But he doesn't even do the key change, and it's actually like 30 more choruses. Yeah, it's exactly right, the same. Right. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, this is the first mention we actually get of the posthumous virgins here. Yeah, an, an important caveat that people often leave out this one, it turns out that, vir- that these virgins also have not been fucked by demons. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, you lost me. I'm just saying, if we've been promised an anime <laughs> girls that had been fucked by demons, I'd machete someone on the plane to England. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, right in your on, goddamn though. hearts. <laughs> hold on, though. If you read the fine print in the Saudi version, that is what we're promised. What? what? And, I'm yeah, back and in. This might, this, this might be the craziest parenthetical in the book. It says, devout Muslims get heaven virgins that, quote, no man or jinn, parentheses, has opened their hymens with sexual intercourse, sexual intercourse before them, end quote. Uh-huh. Non-sexual tentacle stuff is fair game. So like ass uh-huh. stuff is, uh, they, they well, could be. Also. Okay. Except for, in the, well, unless the ass hymen gets open. <laughs> the ass hymen. And if you'd like to buy your ass hymen t-shirt, see us at QB. We have one, and Andrew says it's illegal, I'd but we it. have one. I drew it with crayons. You can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do always try to wrap these on some good news. Something tells me, though, that only three more segments to go isn't going to stave off any nooses this time. So how about this? Hey, guys, now we don't have to read the Quran on an international flight. Well, yeah, I, I was going to hide it inside a copy of Mein Kampf, but this is even better. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> weird. I was going to hide my copy of Mein Kampf inside the Art of the Deal. <laughs> <laughs> And I was going to hide Art of the Deal inside the Quran. But, you know, it <laughs> works out well this way. So, Quran Maniacs will be back in three weeks to knock out ten more tiny little surahs. But between now and then, go read something useful and enjoyable like kitty litter ingredients or instructions or something like that. I'm going to miss you guys so much. <laughs>